A lot of people know that warming up is important, but it seems not as many people know why it's important. And even though there is some research to suggest that warming up really isn't necessary, as I see it, there are at least two really good reasons why warming up before training makes sense. The first is injury prevention. And even though the literature doesn't show a huge effect here overall, on the whole, it shows that warming up prevents injuries better than not warming up at all. A 2006 review article by Fradkin et al. looked at five different studies, three of which found a positive effect of warming up on injury reduction. Of the two studies that found no benefit, both focused more heavily on stretching, and one suffered from a low 68% compliance rate in the warm-up group, whereas the three that did show a benefit focused more on exercising to increase core body temperature and didn't have the same compliance issue. And at the end of the article, the author seemed pretty convinced that warming up was smart for preventing injuries. Simply increasing body temperature seems to be arguably the most important part of the whole warm up. An increase in rectal temperature by 1 to 2 degrees Celsius was a recommendation given by De Vries in 1980. However, I think this paper from 1966 had a more pragmatic suggestion. Exercise to the observance of light to mild sweating in normal ambient conditions. Because the duration of activity to get to this point will depend on one's level of cardiovascular conditioning, it's going to vary from person to person. But for me, five to 10 minutes on the treadmill, Stairmaster, or bike tends to do the trick. However, some research indicates that longer durations are required. A really cool 2013 study found that 15 minutes of warm up at a low intensity was better at improving one rep max strength on the leg press than a five minute warm up. However, considering that the difference in one rep max strength was only three to 4%, and I only very rarely test one rep maxes, I opt for a slightly shorter 10 minute warm up. To make up for the shorter time, I use moderate intensity interval training, or MIIT, with 30 second periods of jogging staggered with two minute walking periods until 10 minutes are up. For those who really like numbers, Barrasso et al. recommend a target zone of 55 to 60% max heart rate, which, assuming you're around 20 to 30 years old, will be around 100 to 120 beats per minute. As a quick aside, some folks would recommend against using a treadmill on lower body days just because it's higher impact, and some research has shown it to interfere more with resistance training. Perhaps since I'm not doing a ton of heavy training lately, I don't observe that interference personally, and so I go with the treadmill because I enjoy it more than the other machines. Of course, there are ways to short circuit this process if you're limited on time, such as by wearing warm, baggy clothing or cranking up the heat on the way to the gym. Uh, but the downside is that you could miss out on the other main positive effect of warming up, which brings me to the second main reason why warming up makes sense. It improves performance. A pretty huge systematic review and meta-analysis pulled together 32 high-quality studies to find that warming up improved performance in 79% of the criteria examined. As you can see, this study looked at many different sports, and warming up didn't always improve performance with 17% of warm-ups actually showing a detriment, but these detriments were often the result of the activity not being suitable for the sport or being too vigorous or tiring. On the whole, the trend indicates that warming up makes you better athletically, and I think it's safe to extend this blanket statement to include strength and physique athletes, especially when you consider the research showing that warming up increases speed of nerve impulses to muscles, sensitivity of nerve receptors on muscles, and it also increases blood flow and nutrient delivery to the muscles during training. In my experience, it also improves mental alertness and psychological readiness. You just feel more prepared to lift. And I also just feel in a better mood after doing a bit of aerobic exercise before jumping right into weightlifting, an effect that can probably be attributed to endorphin release. Now in here somewhere, people often cram in the term mobility. And as long as we're using mobility to simply mean the ability to move through a given range of motion, and we assume the range of motion needed in the context of this video are basic physique and strength focused movements and not gymnastics or even Olympic weightlifting, then I think that the following warm-up will cover most of the bases for this population. Of course, specific immobilities can be addressed with specific drills and stretches, but I think they're best prescribed on a per individual and per diagnosis basis, not just across the board. So the following warm-up is intended to be general and preventative, not individual or prescriptive. I like to split my warm-up into three stages. The first is the general warm-up, which is the 10 minutes of cardio I just covered. The second stage is still part of my general warm-up, but it covers my dynamic stretching and foam rolling. It's become pretty commonly accepted that stretching before training can negatively impact performance in the gym, and most people advise against doing it now. But the question is, is that advice warranted? 
like most things, it depends. In this case, on the type of stretching. In an enormous review on the topic, static stretching was shown to result in a ton of performance impairments, while dynamic stretching was shown to either have no effect or to actually improve performance. However, even static stretches don't seem to impair performance if they last less than 30 seconds per muscle, especially in advanced trainees. And the order also matters. If you do the static stretching first and then do the dynamic stretches immediately after, the negative impact of the static stretching seems to go away. So what I do is a sequence of four or five dynamic stretches for lower body on leg days. And then four or five dynamic stretches for upper body on upper body days. And if there are any specific areas that I'm trying to increase my flexibility or mobility on, such as my groin or hamstring area, then I'll perform static stretches to improve those areas on an as-needed basis for a max of 20 to 30 seconds before doing my dynamic work. Or if they really need extra focus, I'll do them at night before bed. After that, I will optionally do a quick foam rolling sequence. And since foam rolling has been shown to improve range of motion without decreasing muscular activation or force, I think foam rolling can be useful as a tool to work out any areas that might be be more immobile than others. For this, a quick 20 to 30 second roll with a particular focus on any tight areas should be sufficient in most cases. So the final stage of my warmup is the specific warmup with progressive loading. Here you basically want to pyramid your way up in weight until you get to your working weight for your first exercise. So assuming my first exercise for the day is the bench press, my warmup would look something like this. I'd start with the bar for just 10 reps, then I'd do 30% for 5, 50% for 4, 60% for 3, 70% for 2, 70 25% for one or two, and then begin my working sets. And then begin my working sets. Gold medals, then my role models, rolling old models, lowered old schools, flowing coal and going gold follows, flower bearing, call it pedals to the floor. Hey, what is going on everyone? Stephanie and I just finished up at the gym and now we're here in Publix in the ice cream aisle. I just want to say thank you guys so much for watching the video. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up button if you did like it. That helps the video get more exposure, which helps it get more views. Also, if there's anything you guys would like to see in a future video, so like a future Science Explained topic, feel free to let me know in the comments below. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.